Hey, what's up guys? John here. America was downgraded two days ago and today now mortgage rates are at a 22 year high. Credit card interest rates are sky high levels, almost 25% as a national average for credit card interest rates. For context, in 2008 during the great financial crisis, mortgage rates were much lower. Credit card interest rates were much lower. Credit card interest rates for context were about 12% back then and national debt was at a much lower level. Consumer credit card debt today is over 1.1 trillion. Auto loan debt, 1.6 trillion. Student loans, 1.7 trillion. Record high food prices, record high inflation, record high taxes and insurance. Everything's really, really getting out of control. And the US economy is getting rug pulled. We're getting rug pulled in a very aggressive fashion. And I believe this is gonna present one of the greatest investing opportunities we'll ever see in our lifetimes. I'm gonna break down what's going on behind the scenes that nobody's talking about. Please hit the like button. When you hit the like button, YouTube will share this content to educate more people about what's really going on. And also, if you want to fix your credit to position yourself for this wealth transfer, we would love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. Go there and schedule a free strategy session. We'd love to help you and see how we can help you on a strategy call. So go there, book a free strategy session at greatcreditfast.com. Take a look at this. Mortgage rates climbed towards 7% after America's credit rating was downgraded. It's well, it's over. It's seven, almost 7.10. It's 7.09% this week for perfect credit. For context, this is a number of existing homes sold in the United States from 2005 to 2023. So you see where we stand right here, right? We're basically at the great financial crisis levels. Like people aren't selling their homes. They have the golden handcuffs on record low mortgage rates. They locked in, you know, 2020, 2021, and they don't want to sell. But the reality is, Many of them are going to be forced to as the cost of living continues to rise, insurance and property taxes continue to rise, and wages, real-time wages start to soften. People aren't going to be able to refinance their homes. Their credit lines are going to start getting slowly cut. We're already seeing it. We're already hearing about it. Banks are really looking at risk differently because this economy, this economy is on thin ice. So right here, mortgage rates. If you look, they say it's about 6.90%. This goes all the way back to about 20 or 2001 levels. 2001 levels, this is basically where we are, right? And so you're, you're starting to see this trend. Look at the affordability calculator for people that think that, oh, this is, these home prices can hold up. If you are making $85,000 a year and you have $20,000 as a down payment, 7.2%, 7.2%, this is where rates really are. Because if you go here and you just say, you just click on Zillow, Look what they auto-correct at. They auto-correct to 7.247%. That's what they auto-correct at. So it's 7.2%. And also, people that are, you know, most people don't have an 850 credit score. Most people are coming into this with a 690, as you know, 700, 710. That's where their scores are. The 7.10% is for the perfect, perfect, perfect borrower, which that's just not the average American. So $85,000 annual income, $250 in debt, $20,000 down, they can afford a $188,000 house. Where do you buy a $188,000 house? I don't know where. Like I, maybe in Camden, New Jersey, maybe certain little pockets in Baltimore, maybe certain pockets in Detroit. But the average American home is $416,000. That's what the average American property is, $416,100. And so when you look at that, what do you have to make to be able to afford that property? What is it, $185,000? Probably something like that, right? Yeah, about $185,000 to be able to comfortably afford that. Now, that is basically an attorney salary, right? If you're a personal injury attorney, if you're a doctor, if you have a really successful business, you might be making $185,000. Uh, but you're definitely not the average person making $185,000. And so when you start to look at this, I mean, it's, it's just out of control. It's out of control. People cannot afford to pay it, even if they could. Why would they? Why would they go spend, you know, why would they go spend... 2,500 bucks, this is with 20% down as well. Most people aren't putting 20% down, they're putting 6%. I mean, why would someone go pay three grand a month and then go put $25,000 as a down payment when they can go rent something for 1,800, two grand, 2,100, 2,200 bucks, right? They're not. So these buyers are gonna really, really, really start to you know, fade away. They're already fading away as you see here on this chart. But I believe this is gonna can really continue. But look at what's going on here because Elon Musk was talking about this and it really brought a lot of attention to it. So consumer loans, credit cards, and other revolving plans, right? They're talking about credit card debt. Uh, really credit card debt now is just over 1.1 trillion, but in this chart, they show it uh, just at a, roughly at a trillion dollars. Uh, this is about you know two and a half weeks old. So 
when you start to look at this chart, you see that the U.S. economy and the U.S. consumer is in really, really big trouble. Elon Musk said credit card debt in the U.S. is looking scary right now. And he's right. Well, look at this. It's just going to get paid when it gets paid. Balance carry car holders crunched by Fed rate hikes. Well, if you have credit card debt, there's so many of these options. You should really look at these. These 0% APR cards for 24 months. 24 months, no interest. No interest. I mean, if you do have credit card debt, like look at look at where you would be if you had a $20,000 credit card balance, which a lot of people do. A lot of people do. With the national credit card interest rate today, this, this week, 24.58% as a national average. That is so crazy. It's hard to wrap your head around that, right? $20,000 balance, paying $425 a month, it's $50,000 in interest. $50,000. Well, $49,631 to be specific, right? Well, in 2008, it was 12% 12, 12 interest. So you might think, okay, maybe it's $24,000 in interest. No, the difference, it goes from basically fifty grand to $7,000. So it's, it's compounding. It's a compounding effect. So to get out of the hole today, for most people, it's going to be a hell of a lot harder than it was during the great financial crisis. And people still to this day talk about how bad 2008 was. Well, I believe we're stepping into something much, much worse. In 2020 and 2021, 40% of all mortgages were taken out at these record, record low interest rates. And so many people, they have these properties. They love these properties because they, they have these really low mortgage rates. But what happens when people can't afford to live, right? They have this house. They're either going to rent it, they're going to sell it. They're going to have to do something. Most people, you know, not many people are sitting with $100,000, $200,000 in cash and they can just kind of wait this out for a while. Most people, their house is everything. They put all their money into this property and now they're sitting there and that property is just costing them more and more and more money. Taxes going up, insurance going up, repairs going up, utilities going up. Everything is rising. They don't know what to do. Right? Well, when they don't have as many home buyers that can afford to go buy these properties, they're going to have to either sell them for a loss, or they're going to have to rent them, they're going to do something. But I believe renting them is going to become a really, really big trend. And cash out refinances are no longer going to be a thing. Many people that didn't even sell their properties during that period, 2020 and 2021, they refied the hell out of their properties, took all that cash out of these record low interest rates. And a lot of people spent that money. They invested that money in the stock market. They put it into their business. And those investments, they probably didn't turn out the way most people you know, had hoped. And so a lot of people are just sitting with fat mortgages on their properties. It's gonna be a real problem. It's gonna be a real problem. Home foreclosure is rising in California. Florida in the lead, right? Evictions up 50%. Job market, US job market slows further in July. Uh, but you know what I think is going to be really, really interesting is paying attention to what's going on in the rental market and the office market, because I think that this is going to directly impact and really communicate to the single family housing market in a way in which a lot of people are not realizing just yet. So multifamily lending falls from record high, right? Record high. Office loans just hit 5% delinquency rate, a 20 month high, right? 20 month high. Well, look at this. There's a trillion dollars that has to get refied from, from now until 2024. So in the next you know, six to 12 months and about two and a half trillion from now until 2027, right? Strong apartments construction slides in rental cost. What we're going to start to see, it's going to be, it's really going to be really crazy. So this trillion dollars, most of that is underwater properties that they simply, they owe more on the properties than they're worth with these high borrowing costs, these really just softening rents high insurance and taxes, it's an issue. And so what's ultimately gonna happen? When these banks go out there to appraise these properties and they look at the current market, they're gonna to start to really, really get conservative. And so a lot of these people that have these properties are gonna give their keys, give the keys back to the bank. And what is, what's the bank gonna do? You think the bank wants that property? No, but they're gonna likely sell it off. They're gonna sell it off and they're then gonna rent these properties out. A lot of these multifamily properties are gonna get re-rented. And these new investors that are gonna come in there and buy these properties are gonna do it at a lower cost basis. And this lower cost basis is gonna give them an authority in the market. They're gonna be able to drop their rents and they're gonna be able to undercut other investors that you know are trying to hold on to their properties. You have all these single family property owners that purchase these properties at the height of the market in 2020 and 2021. They're gonna start listing their properties for lease. You're gonna see so much inventory hit the market for rent, even if you could afford to buy, even if you're a high income earner and you're looking at this saying, you know what, 
sure, I can afford three grand a month. Let's do it, right? If you're making, you know, 200 grand a year and you're saying, you know what? 200 grand a year, sure, I can go out there and I can buy a house for 416,000, but why am I gonna spend three grand a month when I can rent a house for two grand a month or go out there and buy a distressed deal? And that's what I think a lot of people are gonna start doing. They're gonna really look at their income as their way to skyrocket their wealth into the future, not to tie up all their money into a house when they could simply rent and save more money. And that's what I think we're gonna to start to see here. I believe the entire US housing market is likely gonna get rug pulled, the office market, multifamily. This is gonna be a complete game changer, especially as interest rates likely continue to rise in the short term. I think a lot of people were on the bandwagon that, you know, come January, the Fed was gonna pivot. Well, look, we're in August, and this pivot doesn't look like anywhere in sight. I believe they're gonna continue probably until 2024, maybe even longer. Because at this point, who can really predict? Who can really predict what the Fed's gonna do? I believe that we're just gonna see a lot of people learn some very, very, very hard lessons about buying properties and saying that I'll just, you know, I'll refinance it later. Because that was the big trend, I'll refinance it later. You can only refinance if you have equity. What's it, what is equity? Equity is the difference between what you owe the bank and what the property's worth. That's spread. And you're gonna need 20 to 30% equity to be able to refinance the property. Most people are gonna be underwater. So yeah, people ask me, John, what, what's gonna happen next? Well, smart people that have cash, that have a good business, that have good credit, that are really looking at the facts of the market, those people are gonna do extremely well. And a lot of other people that are ignoring these trends and saying, you know what, it's not that big of a deal. You know, I'll, I'll ride through the storm. Those people are gonna, I believe, learn some hard lessons. There's a lot of capital on the sidelines, 5.5 trillion in capital on the sidelines right now for a reason. Blackstone, the largest, largest real estate fund ever created, 30 billion, $400 million sitting there ready to target ready to target rentals, single family rentals. BlackRock just said that they're getting ready to really try to make deals with banks to buy commercial loans and residential loans. This is what they're doing. They're positioning themselves to this wall of distress that's about to come down. What do you think about this situation? What do you think about what this means for US getting, getting downgraded? Our borrowing costs, I believe, are gonna continue to rise as other countries around the world stop supporting us. Drop it below. I'm really curious as to your thoughts. Uh, and also, if you want to fix your credit, we'd love to help you. My company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. Go there, book a free strategy session. Click the link below. Uh, add me on IG. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.